Item Ways and Means, the new draft of Senate number 2433, Step Therapy, third reading of the bill. An act relative to step therapy and patient safety, Senate number 2843. The bill has been read a third time. The question now comes in passing the bill. For what purpose does the gentleman rise? Um, Mr. President, I would like to uh, ask the uh, author of the piece of legislation before us on step therapy for a brief explanation. I know that the gentleman from the Cape and the Islands has been uh, focused on this issue for quite a long period of time. I'm glad to see it before us here today. The chair recognizes the senator from the Cape and Islands, Senator Sear. Thank you, Mr. President, and through you to uh, my friend from Weymouth and, and my colleagues. Uh, I rise in favor of an act relative to step therapy and patient safety. Uh, step therapy refers to the practice by health insurers of mandating that doctors prescribe pre-selected medical treatments in steps, usually less costly genetic medications, to patients, um, to patients until such treatment is deemed ineffective. Uh, the goal of this, quote, step therapy policy is to reduce drug costs. Um, the other term you often hear in this context is fail first, meaning a patient's medical condition has to fail to improve, I repeat, fail to improve, after a period of time on a step one drug before their doctor can switch them to the preferred medication for their uh, specific medical condition. Uh, in my view, step therapy just doesn't work. It prevents sick people from receiving the medical treatments they need and that their doctor feels are best suited for them, only for the purpose of saving costs to, uh, short-term costs to um, payers, private payers and public payers of insurance. Um, the use of step therapy by, in particularly the federal Medicare program, and by private insurers is especially alarming. Forcing a patient to go through step therapy can lead to worsening symptoms and long-term health problems. It allows the health insurance plan to determine treatment instead of the clinician. Worsening symptoms lead to complications, and in turn, those least lead to increased cost for patients and to the healthcare system overall. Think repeat visits to the emergency department or repeat hospitalizations. Caring for serious and complex illnesses on the cheap does not save payers or our healthcare system money. In many cases, it only worsens the medical conditions of patients. Step therapy is the short-sighted practice that puts patients at unnecessary risk. It takes lower costs today in exchange for more harm, more hospitalizations, and more spending in the very near future. Uh, this approach disproportionately affects patients who often require specialized care for chronic diseases, such as cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, macular degeneration, among others. These chronic diseases are often treated with biological drugs that involve complicated manufacturing considerations. They may be a little more expensive, but they often are far more effective. They are not easily replaced by generics or alternatives that insurers put at a, quote, step one or, quote, step two to provide the same level of treatment. As to the bill, it is a common sense proposal that looks to reform the use of step therapy in Massachusetts. It is not an outright ban, nor is it a mandate uh, of new benefits uh, that would enforce insurers to change their formularies. Uh, the bill would simply establish basic safeguards for patients um, who, are required to go un who are required to undergo step therapy by their insurer. It would allow patients and providers to have a transparent and expedient appeals process. Uh, it would provide a guarantee and an appeals process uh, to support patients and their providers in making decisions based on treatment options uh, and a patient's specific medical history, not the dictates from an insurance company. Personally, I would like to see uh, an end to the use of step therapy policies. I would like to see medical necessity decisions made by the treating physician for their individual patients, uh, but I am realistic, and if a more measured reform regarding the use of step therapy is possible right now, then let's get that done. Uh, I am hopeful we are addressing step, Sarah, we are addressing step therapy today um, that will provide critical protections for some Massachusetts residents. Uh, COVID-19 has turned over the tables that so many, um, has really turned the tables and really changed things for us here. As families lose jobs and employer-sponsored health insurance um, that also is associated with that employment, families are scrambling to pick up the pieces and to re-enroll in health insurance. The process is painful, turbulent, and should not may be made worse by insurance carriers' capricious order to take a cheaper medication, just to be sure that it fails before patients are finally able to resume medication that their providers know is right. For some patients, 
Trudging through insurance step sequences isn't just an inconvenience or a delayed reset. It is harmful, and the damage from lost time is permanent. Mr. President, I am delighted that the Senate is taking up this legislation today. Um, I would like to thank our leader, um, Senate President Spilka, uh, for meeting the moment here in urgent issues in healthcare and so much more. I'd like to thank my friend from Westport, the, our Chair of Ways and Means, for his steady leadership and support. Uh, I am likewise grateful to my colleague from Arlington, uh, our Chair of Healthcare Financing, whose keen policy mind and fierce commitment to justice has steered this body to be bold yet responsible in our efforts to instigate some good trouble in healthcare policy. And, let, and I'd like to especially thank uh, our staff who have done so much to prepare this legislation for consideration today. Uh, Doug Howgate in the Senate President's Office, Martha Kwasnick and Tova Miller in Senate Ways and Means, uh, Dave, Swanson, Dave Swanson and Deborah Brown uh, from Chair Friedman's Office, uh, Andrea Pisolano in Senator Keenan's office, and in my office, Pat Johnson, Catherine Thibodeau, Jeff Soares, Frank Schultz, and especially Liz Gans, uh, my general counsel and legislative director, who is smart as a whip and brings kindness and humanity to our work in health policy. Um, I ask that my colleagues join me in supporting this bill, and when a vote is taken on this matter, I ask that it be taken by a call of the yeas and nays. The gentleman from the Cape and Islands has asked that when a vote is taken, it's taken by a call of the yeas and nays. A sufficient amount of senators rising. When the vote is taken, it will be taken by a call of the yeas and nays.